Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today I'm returning after a bit of an absence. It's been a while since my last video, and even that video wasn't really a full one, it was just kind of an abbreviated one. I've been out sick for most of the last week, so it's been difficult to record. I'm finally getting over that sickness, knock on wood, uh, and hopefully that will remain the case. Uh, I've got a bit of catching up to do, uh, definitely behind, hoping by February 1st that I get back up to my normal speed of production, but uh, for the moment anyway, uh, I am back. I'm doing a video about a twelfth of the way through the year that I had hoped to do by the first of the year, and that video is my top five most anticipated games of 2017. Now, fortunate for me, with one glaring exception, none of those games have come out, and uh, none of those games have come out yet in terms of... Uh, any different than 2016. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. This will be a little bit informal because I don't really have gameplay footage to show off per se, uh, so much as just kind of talking about some games that I'm looking forward to and why I'm looking forward to those. So the first game that I'm going to be talking about is, well, I'm cheating here, Ultimate General Civil War. I've talked about this game ad nauseum, and in fact, my channels almost, or at least for a while, became a Ultimate General Civil War channel. So, with that being said, um, the reason it's on my list for most anticipated games of 2017 is because the game is currently in early access. There are numerous battles that are still going to come out, Gettysburg amongst them, and my thought process was... Even though it was in my most played games of 2016, the full experience isn't here yet. And if I continue to enjoy it the way that I have thus far, I will probably see it on my most played games of 2017. And therefore, if I'm thinking it'll be one of the most played games that I play all year, why not include it in my list? Again, I realize it's out in early access. It's not fully published yet, though. And because of all the changes that are going on with the game, the updates, the enhancements, whatnot, it is a game I will be following throughout the year. And that, to me, qualifies it for my most anticipated games of 2017. Bit of a cop-out, I know, but it is what it is. My second most anticipated game coming out this year, hopefully, is Afghanistan 11. Afghanistan 11 is an interesting game. Uh, it is being developed by every single soldier, uh, which is the same company that brought us Vietnam 1965, uh, which came out, was it last year or two years ago, which was kind of an operational level game that put you in the shoes of an American commander in the Idrang Valley, but it was a little bit abstract and there was political purchase points. It wasn't truly an operational game in the Idrang Valley. It was more of like a Vietnam abstraction game, and yet it was a lot of fun. It was very well done. It introduced the idea of, you know, political points starting out really high for the U.S. and, you know, declining throughout the course of the war. And while that's a tactic that's been used in a lot of board games, I've never seen it used in a computer game before. Uh, Afghanistan 11 looks interesting to me, though. It doesn't look exactly like uh, Vietnam 65 did. Vietnam 65 was kind of the first effort by every single soldier to embrace a counterinsurgency war. And it was interesting, but a little bit too abstract and removed from the political side of things for me, a little bit too removed from the military side of things. Every single soldier's Afghanistan 11, which I believe is in beta right now, although unfortunately I haven't been able to play it yet, uh, is a little bit more. It's advertising that it's going to have a full nation-building model where players can affect hearts and minds of the local population via non-military means, so constructing infrastructure and delivering UN aid, for example, which is interesting because that kind of stuff was completely abstracted or left out of Vietnam 65. It'll also have an 18-battle-long campaign covering the iconic, and I'm quoting here, covering the iconic Afghan war operations from establishing Camp Rhino to the Bin Laden reign, raid. So it's, it's really focused on Afghanistan in 2011 when kind of the surge happened there, which lagged after the surge in Iraq. Uh, but it has a fully baked campaign, which will be interesting to see because Vietnam 65, again, was just sort of one scenario played at differing vil uh, difficulty levels. It was randomized, but there were no linked battles. So it'll be interesting to see how the game covers that. 
Uh, I like the fact that it'll cover both Afghan and American Army stuff. I expected that. I'm curious how air operations will be different. In Vietnam 65, it was more of just a flat, you know, you call in close air support. I'm guessing this will be a little bit different. It feels like the game will be more of an operational level game uh, as opposed to, uh, you know, a... Um, a Oh, good lord! I can't. Even, it feels more like it'll be an operational game where you can, where you can actually control the outcome. Whereas Vietnam '65 was very much a run out the clock and hope you can do the best of you know of your abilities. It also claims it has some sort of ability for U.S. forces to model handing over control and combat responsibilities to the Afghan army, and includes a full U.S. withdrawal. Uh, I believe we still have forces there, so I don't know if that's like a future sort of scenario or what. Um, and it also includes. Enemy logistics, uh, which is not something that, as far as I could tell, Vietnam 65 really had. Vietnam 65 was this idea of, you know, the VC strikes you and then they disappear to somewhere else. And there was no real sort of logistical structure, at least that was clearly articulated to the player. Afghanistan is making the argument that you will have things like uh, drug sales for the, Af for the uh, Taliban army that will, you know, help facilitate them. So if you can cut down on drug sales, then you can limit their ability to, you know, to expand and succeed. So in all senses, this game feels like a little bit more than Vietnam was, feels a little bit more well thought out, a little bit more detailed. And yet, based on these screenshots that I've been sharing with you, it still looks really approachable. Again, these are all development level screenshots, but it doesn't look like an overly encumbered, overbuilt war game. It actually looks like something that does an interesting job of putting limits on you in terms of not making it too complex while also making it more complex than the previous version. So I think this might be the game that I'm the most excited about in 2017, uh, but we'll see. I mean, it's it's slated to come out sometime this year. It's put out by Matrix and Slytherin Games, uh, so it'll be interesting to see. I'm really excited about it. The next one's going to be a shorty. This is number three. It's also made by every single soldier. And this is maybe an honorable mention, maybe actually on the list. I'm not sure. I think I'll end up having six games on this list. But it's another game that's being developed by every single soldier. I don't know if it's still just the one guy making these games, but it's called Carrier Deck. And it's not a war game per se. It seems to be a game where you are the kind of the CAG or whatnot, and your job is to operate an American aircraft carrier that is conducting operations at sea, and you need to manage the flight deck, essentially. So you need to make sure that, you know, planes get to their catapults and get launched, planes are able to land and are retrieved, uh, and you need to make sure, you know, aircraft are resupplied, re provisioned. Uh, you need to be able to support special force deployments, amphibious operations, uh, support ground and airstrikes, um, you know, it just, it's kind of putting you in the control. It's almost like a control tower game, but putting you in control of an aircraft carrier and you're managing the deck. I don't have a ton to say about this. It doesn't seem like it's going to be an extremely detailed game, but it does seem like it'll be one of those fun little time wasters. Could be an iPad game. I'm not sure. Uh, but it is exciting looking. I think I'll probably end up pouring more hours than I care to admit into it. So, you know, every single soldier seems to be building kind of an interesting uh, collection of uh, items here and, and certainly seems to be uh, worth keeping an eye on uh, from a kind of mid-level to more casual level war gamer. And I'm looking forward to that. So we'll see what happens with that. The next game on my list is number four. This just got, well, actually, I'm going to abandon the numbers here because there's going to be six, but it's the fourth game that I'm talking about now, and it just got announced the other day. It's not a full-blown game. It's a DLC, and it's to Order of Battle Pacific, which I mentioned was on my top played games of 2016. And I know very little about this DLC. It was announced, oh, two, three days ago, and it's called Order of Battle Kriegsmarine. I'm skeptical about this one, so when I say I'm most anticipated... I'm really curious how the game is going to capture and handle the subject that it's dealing with. What this appears to be is a DLC for Order of Battle World War II, which is a kind of Panzer Corps type game, which puts you in control of, you know, the uh, German armies and or allied armies in World War II, uh, turn-based combat, 
hex-based combat, no real frontage in, in terms of, like, are you facing front, left, or right in terms of getting flanked, does include supply lines, uh, and very abstracted naval combat, right? So a ship, you know, fires against another battleship, and you've each got 10 hit points, and one takes four damage, and one takes three, and over three or four days, because each turn simulates a day, you will end up sinking an enemy ship. It's not very accurate to what real combat would be. And what Order of Battle Kriegsmarine purports to be is a Order of Battle DLC game that puts you in charge of the German Navy, uh, or maybe even the Royal Navy, but definitely the German Navy, as you attempt to starve the British out of World War II. So, in essence, you're fighting the Battle of the Atlantic. Now, I mentioned in a previous video that more games need to capture, uh, more na games need to cover the Battle of the Atlantic, that it's a fascinating period of history, and yet in terms of the war game space, really gets abandoned. In, in fact, most, most naval combat gets abandoned, but certainly at naval combat in the Atlantic, uh, and that's why I, I thought so highly of Atlantic Fleet, even if the game was somewhat uh, flawed. Now, with Order of Battle Kriegs Marine, I don't know what to expect. The naval combat in Order of Battle is already flawed. The real uh, area it shines is in combined operations. The need to, you know, move your fleets and use air units and then kind of coordinate that all with ground units. That's the bit where it really does a good job. However, when it comes to actual ship-on-ship -ship fighting, this whole turn-based, round-based uh, battles over periods of days where... You wear down every single ship and there's never a catastrophic hit. That doesn't work, especially for a submarine-based war. You know, the idea, if you're trying to get the Battle of the Atlantic right, should be a sub hitting a convoy and then quickly scurrying away as escorts try and chase it. And I just don't know how you're going to model that kind of fighting in a turn-based game that's built around the Panzer Corps sort of ideology. Naval combat was always the weak point of Panzer Corps, or Panzer General, uh, and, and is even so kind of the weak point of order of battle, despite being about the Pacific Ocean. There's definitely improvements there, uh, or the Pacific you know, theater. There's definitely improvements there, but it's far from perfect and, and highly flawed, and on its own, standing as a naval combat game, I don't think it'll hold. Uh, but we'll see how it how the game handles it. If they, they do some interesting and unique things, it could be fun. It's certainly on my radar to keep an eye at. Okay, so the next video, number five. The fifth video on my list is going to be, well, not really a war game. It's more of a first-person shooter, and that game is War of Rights which is a game that I believe takes the Mountain Blade sort of third-person adventure, uh, you know, grand-scale kind of shooter, but also kind of adventure game, and, you know, brings it to the American Civil War. Uh, that's what it seems like, at least maybe what the engine's kind of based around, or at least kind of the feel of the game they're trying to go for. I don't know. The game is still in alpha. I've had a chance to kind of walk around the, the army camps, um, but... It's really interesting. Uh, there's not a lot of games that cover the Civil War. This one seems to be doing it in great detail. I don't know if that'll work for a shooter. I love that when I hit the reload button, it takes 15 seconds or so to reload. goes through almost all of the you know accurate historical steps. It skips the biting off the end of the cartridge bit. Um, but on the whole, looks really interesting. Was crowdfunded. Uh, looks like it's going to pay serious attention to detail and be a lot of fun in a non-strategy game kind of way. So it's it's something that's on my radar. It's something that I'm interested in. Um, but I guess we'll see how it plays out. And the final game, so I guess this is actually number six now, but the final game on my list, I sure hope I can count. Let's see. Let's recap here. We've got uh, Ultimate General Civil War. We've got Order of Battle Kriegsmarine. We've got War of Rights. We've got uh, Carrier Deck and Afghanistan. So yeah, that's five. We're on to number six. And that sixth game is going to be Cold Waters. Uh, this is a game put out by Killerfish Studios, the same company that made Atlantic Fleet. I don't know if this one will come out in 2017 or not. I sure hope it does. But this game is essentially taking the Atlantic Fleet concept of a dynamic campaign uh, where you're fighting a, a war against commerce and takes it to a hypothetical war of NATO versus the Russians in uh, the North Atlantic and puts you in command of just one instead of a fleet. You command just one submarine and it is a real-time game instead of turn-based, so they fix a lot of the combat uh, 
issues uh, associated with trying to fight naval combat in turns, you know, where you have a 5-inch gun having the same rate of fire as a 16-inch gun, for example, and puts you in the shoes of an American nuclear submarine driver uh, as the Russians take, I think, Iceland. It's a very Red Storm risey. And the game just looks really interesting, looks a lot of fun, hoping it's, you know, very much a strategy game as well, uh, hoping the dynamic campaign, you know, plays out. And, yeah, I mean, those are my, my games. Now, I will say... Um, that of those six games, those are amongst like some of the only games I know of that have been announced for 2017. So it's kind of hard. This industry doesn't do a great job of setting up hype about their games in advance. To some extent, maybe that prevents the industry from being burned by failed expectations. But on the flip side, it also means that it's really hard to figure out what's coming out. And you really got to be looking in the right places when a game comes out to even know if it comes out. Uh, it's an area that I think the gaming industry, the war gaming industry, could do a better job of marketing itself and getting its name out there ahead of time, saying, hey, this game is coming, it may be two months away, but we're going to start our marketing efforts, as opposed to kind of, a lot of times, it seems like games are just kind of announced as they come out, or announced like two or three days before they come out. That's how Ultimate General originally was. Uh, so I, I, you know, it's, it's, not in any way comprehensive. I'm sure we'll look back at this list at the end of the year and say, ha, huh, he was wrong. There were all these other great games that also came out. But uh, they just haven't been announced, or at least I haven't seen them. Um, Aurora, I don't know when that's supposed to be more fully polished, and I haven't really given the game as it is a look. Is something else that's on my radar that I'd like to play. Um, but, you know, that's all. That's where we'll leave it. Maybe a Stellaris DLC, but again, I don't know what's coming out yet, so it's hard for me to really comment on that. Anyway, guys, this was a bit of an abbreviated video. I didn't go into terrible depth. Uh, I hope it was enjoyable. Let me know your thoughts down below. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.